Um, when I was younger, I, I wanted to tell stories. Um, I wanted to tell stories through animation. Um, and I was a massive computer geek. I was into all sorts of software. And um, I, I was got into this new world of CGI and animation. But at some point, I decided I was going to be an architect. Somebody somewhere along the line, I think it was my dad, told me that I should do something proper. So I studied architecture. Um, and then for the next uh, eight years, I spent time practicing and studying architecture. Um, I learned how to design. I learned how to uh, use the skills I'd learned to uh, design spaces to take things from the visual to the actual built environment. I also learned how to manage to break down huge projects into tiny bite-sized pieces. Um, for the last two years I, of my study, and I, I went to a very open and conceptual school. It was called the Bartlett School of Architecture. And we used animation and film to talk about our architectural ideas and our architectural theories. I saw this as a massive opportunity to take a sidestep left and go back to all the things I was really into when I was younger. So the elephants, the robots, the kind of massive towers, all the stuff that I could be very creative with. And this all came to a head in my final thesis project, which was a short film and animation pro um, design project called Robots of Brixton. And Robots of Brixton was a project that changed everything for me because it, it, it allowed me to go full circle back into what I really wanted to do, which was um, uh, tell stories and tell visual stories. So this is Robots of Brixton playing now. Um, and this was a retelling of the 1981 race riots in South London. Um, and it was an important story for me to tell because it was, it was an event that happened at the start of my life um, and it was an event that gave like, the black community in England and the UK a voice and essentially put me in the position I was in today as a, as a young academic black Briton. Um, and I've wanted to retell it, but I didn't want to tell it straight. I didn't want to tell it in a very kind of black way. I wanted to tell it in, a, in a, an accessible way, a way that people would be drawn in by the visuals and then they'll be engaged by the story by that way. Um, and it was a huge success, it won awards, but the biggest success was it reached hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people from all walks of life, academics, school kids, film buffs, loads of people knew about this project and it touched them and they could have their own commentary on it. Um, and what that allowed me to do was, as I said before, go completely full circle um, and start being a visual storyteller. And if I'd distribute it as traditional methods, not as many people would have seen it and it would have still been on DVDs and people's um, cupboards. Um, but what it meant that companies like uh, the British Film Institute, Film4 and, and Shine Pictures in the UK saw me as a filmmaker they wanted to develop and a filmmaker they wanted to invest in as well as it allowed me to start an animation studio called Factory 15. And together we worked on a, a short film, a short but big magical realist film about the world's biggest jumping fish. It's coming soon. Um, and this film is set in Zanzibar and it's this... this <laughs> Uh, the fish changes everything. It turns Zanzibar into this huge, from this uh, idyllic uh, fishing village to this huge uh, tourist town. And these are the sort of stories that I want to tell, stories that have an a important social message, a sort of social and political message um, embedded into this visual world so people are drawn in and embrace this. Um, and I think as I like to shape and design worlds, as I move into this new industry of film, I'm hopefully going to shape it and form it in a, in a small but significant way. Because I think there are lots and lots, hundreds and thousands of filmmakers like me uh, putting their work out, picking up their cameras, animating stuff, putting their stuff online and sharing them with a wide community. And these people aren't, um, they aren't confined by uh, the commercial narratives that you need to have because they're making it for the art. And I think these are the, this is the future of uh, filmmaking for me, or the future filmmakers, as they've got new stories to tell in very different ways. Thank you. Thank you.